The session is now live. Hello, my name is Angela and I'm the Careers Advisor in Waterford Institute of Technology. Thanks a million for joining the session on creating a winning CV. And also, hopefully you've all been tuning in to the Graduate Careers Fair and Waterford Institute of Technology is one of the colleges participating in the fair. So make use of all the excellent um, events that are happening at it and presentations. Okay, so when you're putting your CV together, there's a few things I think you should keep in mind. So first of all, during this session, I'm going to look at what's the purpose of your CV, why you're putting it together. Look at the different sections you should include, some general guidelines around it, and also covering letters, giving you some hints and tips, because covering letters kind of seem to disappear for a while, and then they come back. So a lot of people kind of maybe struggle, what do I put in my covering letter, or is my email to me for the covering letter? So we're gonna to touch on all of those. Um, okay, so when you're putting your CV together, there's a lot of things we can often take from that. So I would recommend that you first think back on the skills you've gained and what abilities you have from your work experience, from volunteering, from your education. So first thing, review what you've been doing to date. What are your interests, what are your hobbies? Do you volunteer? What are you studying in college? Because from all of those, you will have gained some skills. Also look then, what have you achieved from your interests, your hobbies and education? Keep a note of those. And then think about, define what skills contribute to these achievements. So even if it's sporting achievements, it could be commitment, it could be dedication, it could be time management. So everything that you've done, whether it's a hobby, interest, paid work, volunteering, you will have gained skills and achievements from all of those. So, you know, first of all, you'll be starting with a rough document of keeping all your skills and your abilities might sound like an odd question, but what is the purpose of the CV? And I think if we all ask it ourselves before we put our CV together, what's the purpose of the CV? I think we would approach it very differently. So I see it as it's to test if you can communicate the right level of detail in the right way. For all of us when we're putting our CVs together, we think how much do we write? What should we include? So think of it this way the right level of detail in the right way. And think of to the employer who's reading your CV that they have enough detail. Is your, your CV is also your sales brochure, so it's selling you your skills. It should outline your education and your experience to date as well, whether it's paid experience or unpaid experience or volunteer. And finally, the purpose of your CV is to demonstrate a match between your skills and the skills required for the job you're applying for. So keep in mind an effective CV or a good CV will really increase your chances of an interview, but not always a job. But the flip side of that is if you haven't put in the effort, an effective CV has to have the potential to ensure you don't get an interview at all and your CV is in the middle of a pie or it's pressed, someone's pressed to it. Another question I put to you is, how long do you think a busy employer would spend reviewing your CV before they call you for an interview? Will they spend minutes, an hour, a few days, a few hours, a few minutes? So think of it, your CV is emailed to an employer or sent to an employer and there could be hundreds of thousands. So a person who's used to reviewing CVs, who's put the CV or the job application together, they will be reviewing that in seconds. So the first round, they look, they scan through it and see if there's errors, if there's mistakes, if the person is qualified. So it's down to seconds. So th things to keep in, in mind as well. Remember the employer should define the job and the role, and that'll be kind of under the heading of the job spec or the job description. So they're telling you what they're looking for, what's it. Then they'll maybe identify the key skills and attributes for you to do that job. And then the shortlist looking for a match between the candidate, so what you've said, 
and the job description. And one hint I would give you is the clues to what would you put in their CV can often be in the advert of the job. So they've told you what the job involves, they've told you what they're looking for. So look at your skills and abilities to date and your experience. If you have them, put them in your CV. Don't assume they know you'll have them because you applied. And sometimes students say, well, look, I wouldn't have applied for the job unless I had what they're looking for. Because as I would say, if it's not written down, it's not seen. Okay. So three rules for your CV. I would keep it simple, clear, and short. And customize your CV for every position you're applying for. So it should be targeted for the job you're going for. Look at the job description, look at your CV, and then highlight the things in your CV that suit that position. But don't just copy and paste phrases out of that word, because it always will spot that. So target your CV for the job you're going for. So some, when we look at the content, I, I've kind of focused on these particular headings. And this is really, I suppose, for someone who's just coming into their final year, going out on work placement, or a recent graduate. So your personal details should be a compact heading or footnote. Again, a question students ask me, should I have a career aid, a career as an objective on my CV, or a personal profile? And I would say, my personal opinion would be, it's optional. But if you're going to use it, avoid using kind of broad and flamboyant statements. Try and be simple and to the point. And ask yourself, does what I've written make sense if I was to read it back or a stranger was to read it? And also, does it add value or am I just repeating what's going to fall? So keep it simple and to the point. Also, often what happens in this area of the personal profile, we may not be confident in what we want to say about ourselves. So you may Google it and pick up another profile. You said that sounds look good, it reads well, it looks well, and you're copying and pasting that which you see. And sometimes, you know, it's not your profile. You didn't write it, you kind of copied it. So just avoid that if you're unsure. Again, I would say for this, if you're an early graduate or an early graduate or going into your final year, start with your education, your qualifications. So that's the most recent, first, and one back. Don't assume the employer knows all about your course. Educate them. Tell them about your course, what are the main subjects you've covered, if there's any particular projects you've covered that are related to the industry or the job you're going for. And often your projects can be quite a large piece of work as well. So it is important I would name the project. Is it a team project? Did it involve an external employer, external agencies? Did you work on your own? So give the title and two to three lines explained. And be able to talk about your project in a way that you know that the employer they would pick up in a few sentences that they know what you've done. Another heading which is important to put in is your computer skills. So maybe any hardware, software packages, any languages, or if you're teaching yourself some software packages. Then you'll move on to your employment. And your employment should always, I suppose, be action result orientated. And you would put that under your duties and responsibilities. So you're saying where you worked and what you did. Back again, which I mentioned earlier on, was your skills gained. Show how the skills that you've used or you've gained can be transferred into the industry or the sector. Employers know if you're a role graduate that you may not have a lot of related experience, but what you can get across is the skills that you've gained from working in the petrol pumps, working in Tesco, working in Little Aldi, or your corner shop can be transferred into the Again, then look at maybe your achievements and any positions or responsibilities that you had, your interests and your hobbies, and then your reference. So, a little checklist for accuracy and presentation of your CV. And this is often where people fall down. Ideally, two pages, maximum three. But I think if you look at the layout of your CV and have you know, broad enough um, that you narrow margins, it'll be, and footers, it'll be easier to put into the two. Check things like your punctuation, grammar, grammar, spellings. Check the consistency and the font sizes, the font examples and the size as well. So Arial is usually a good one to use. 
check the formatting of your CV as well before you send it out because often how what it looks like on your desktop before you send it to somebody could be very different than what they get here. Experiment with the layout again. So I would encourage you to write across your page. Don't have all these, you know, headers and headings and everything on one side of your page. Write across the page. Experiment with the layout. Proofread your CV before you send it off. Don't have gaps in your CV or your history as well, because people would, that usually causes questions. Avoid using personal pronouns when you're writing your CV, like I worked here, I did this, I did that. So if you use an action word, it saves the personal pronouns in the history. You don't need a cover sheet that says your CV, or if you're sending it to somebody, you don't need that. A big thing I would say to you as well is save your CV, not as my CV, but using your CV. So my case would be CV and Collins instead of my CV. Okay. Another hint I would say, avoid using tables if possible because tables can take up a lot of space. I would bold your headings and, and avoid underlining as well if that's possible. So bold your headings so it guides the reader to what you're saying. Um, bullet points are perfect. Um, again, it saves having long sentences and long narratives. So when I'm encouraging you to use and avoid, I suppose, using I, if you use an action word, that would help you. So organized, planned, initiated, saves you saying I, organized, I planned. No photographs. And again, I would keep your CV to black and white. There's lots of templates out there, but keep it plain and simple for the role that you're going for. And again, think of the reader, make it easy. So this is a simple layout I would suggest. So your name, your address, your LinkedIn, if you've got one, your telephone contact, and your email. So, you know, small things that happen is make sure you have all the, the digits in your mobile phone number, you're not missing anyone, and that your email is a professional address. And start with your education if you're going into your final year and you're a recent graduate. State when you started, the college you went to. Give the full title of your course. Again, give the main subjects working now and working back. So the final year, what is front. Your projects, the title, and a line or two describing it. Second level, you can mention the college you went to and the years you were there. And some of the organizations look for leave and search specific grades. So you can mention your points, but a lot of the candidacy firms will ask you to mention the specific grades. So keep that in mind. So then you're on to your work experience. Again, start now and work back. The name of the organization you work for, the location. So either pick the heading role or the position. What was the position you had for that organization or the role? And then when you work there. The day, your duties and responsibilities. So say what you did. And also earlier on, I mentioned about reviewing the skills. So skills gained. What skills did I gain while I was working? organization skills, time management, attention to detail, communication skills, and customer service. So think of the position you had, and then again reflect on what skills did I gain. And you might feel, when I just worked in the corner shop, I only did this. But there's skills attached to that, you know, customer relations, attention to detail. So reflect on those. Then as I also mentioned, your computer skills. So maybe operating packages, the programming languages as well. Mention them. Look on the job's description. If they say specific words and you have it, make sure you put it in Language skills are always on the lookout by employers. So if you have, um, if English is your mother tongue, you don't need to put that down. But if there's other languages you have, if you did language to leave the search or junior search, mention that. And you might have conversations language as well, so mention it, and if your mother tongue is Arabic or whatever it is, so put in the language skills that you have. So there's also heading additional information, so if there's information that you have that you want to share with an employer but you're not too sure where to put it in, you could have maybe had a safe pass, you could have had health and safety training, you could have had maybe training that was organised by the, the organisation you volunteer with or the company you work with here can be placed to put it in. You've got a full driver's license. You can put that in. And your hobbies and interests are always 
want to put in, but maybe just don't list them. Maybe write them into a sentence. If I'm a member of the local triathlon company organization, I swim on a regular basis, I enjoy reading, especially fiction. But spending time on Facebook, Instagram, and with my friends are really not interested in hobbies and power and be looking for it yourself. Then when it comes to your references, always ask permission. So get the title of the person. If they're an academic, say what they lecture in, if they were a course leader, your dissertation supervisor, the college they came from, the contact number. But do ask permission. And then you might have a work referee plus something else. And then at the end, I kind of emphasize earlier on the importance of using action words. So the action words can be help you if you're stuck for words. So organized, planned, guided, handled. So there's some that you can use. Another thing that's important, and when I'm in classes talking about CVs, I often ask students, you know, has anyone ever lied? And I would say 90% of them put up their hands. So don't lie, don't fabricate anything, because employer could check, or you could be cut out. It could be something smaller, but someone who smokes, an employer may potentially see you as maybe being dishonest. So covering letters, they disappeared for a while, but they came back. So I would recommend maybe following some of the ideas and the guidelines below here. So your CV is not the first page of your cover letter. Cover letter, sorry, is not the first page of your CV. It's a separate document. So it would be, in my case, it would be Angela Collins cover letter, Angela Collins. So they're separate. It's worthwhile spending time going through it. Emphasize what you can do for that organization as well. Don't be afraid to be enthusiastic and also keep it polite and not really too over your form. So, the different sections if you divide your cover letter, the opening, say which job you're applying for, where you saw it, because that's always useful information to employers. Why you tell them why you're a good candidate, describe how you match the job description and use positive language. Why them? Explain why you're interested in the job and the company or the organization. And at the end, then, add a closing sentence referencing your CV and your availability for the interview. So it's kind of four different sections. If you're writing to a named person, close your CV with your sincerely, and if it's dear sir or madam, it's your statement. But I would try and encourage you maybe to try and find out who you're writing a letter to. Because for all of us, when you get a dear sir or madam, we kind of maybe dismiss it a little bit, but if you can find out who you're writing it to, do that. Okay, so in summary, construct your CV with your perspective and file. As I said earlier on, target your CV to the job that you're going for. Look back at the job spec if you have a bit of work mentioned. And then your CV, tailor your CV to the job. Your CV shouldn't be your life story, but tailored, focus on the areas that are important for the job. Make your CV clear, neat, and tidy. So using the headings that I've given you makes it easy for the employer. They have your personal de details, they have your education, they have your work experience, and they have your languages, and they have your computer skills. So they can see it, so they're not back and forth. Okay. And again, Keep an eye that it's neat and tidy. I would encourage you to use bold headings and not underline the bold. That's hard on the reader. And again, with tables and charts, they're hard on the reader and they take up more space. View your experience in a positive light. So again, try to look objectively at your experiences and identify what you've learned. So that's pulling out the skills that you've gained. Place the important information up front. So if you have related experience, focus on that first. And you know, whether it's volunteering, volunteering work as well. So place the important information front. Put your e name and your email address on every page, just in case it gets um, slated or people are printing them off. And that's what I would say about your footers and headings. Use positive language, use the action words I gave you, organize, plan, motivate, and supervise. So it saves you using I good time. And again, if you're making a statement or if you say you have a particular skill, I'll be giving an example. So, you know, quote concrete outcomes to support your case. So while I worked in the 
column, I increased sales, you know, I changed the company structure, I did the following. So give specific examples because that's what employers are really looking for. So again, include information which they don't include information which can be negatively. Okay. Don't include anything that might discriminate you. So you don't need your date of birth, you don't need your marital status, race, gender. Again, don't include salary information or expectations. Again, don't make your CV longer than the two pages. Okay, if it goes on maybe to a third one, ask yourself why it's going on to the third one. Can I have, you know, my margins not as wide as I, 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 I thought, or your footers and headers reduce those as well. And don't dilute the important information. Sometimes what can happen is if people have a lot of sporting activities and achievements, they can give that a lot of space, but maybe that's not the important part. So look at what you have, get it reviewed by your career service or a friend or a colleague before you send it on. Again, a lot of us you know, are aware of the jargon and acronyms or technical terms that we use, but maybe not everyone knows who they are. So avoid them or explain them where possible. As I said earlier on, don't lie and don't include a photograph unless requested. And again, there's a lot of employers not asking for photographs. So I know that was kind of a whistle stop um, gone through with your CV, but you know, do avail of the seminars that are happening throughout the, the careers fair. Go back to your career service, have a look, check on the Grad Ireland website, check on your careers website. There's lots of useful resources out there. So keep it simple, short, but definitely get your CV reviewed before you send it. So thanks a million for tuning in and good luck with your job hunt. Thank you. Bye-bye.